We are set for 10 rounds or less in the heavyweight division. And it features undefeated prospect F.A. Ajagba taking on the once beaten German Michael Wallisch. And Wallisch making his U.S. debut. In fact, in his last fight, one of the stranger first losses a fighter could experience. He was stopped twice in the same fight in the fourth round. He was counted out after he took a knee. Ref thought it was due to a punch. After a long delay after his corner protested, well, they apparently reviewed the video and it was a clash of heads. They had to restart the fight. Fifth round, he gets, well, he sits on the ropes after taking an uppercut when his head was pulled down by Christian Hammer. He thought he was going to win via DQ. Instead, he gets counted out so he loses again and if you think that is strange well his opponent tonight F.A. Ajagba says hold my boxing gloves because Ajagba who is scheduled for his first 10 round affair he has seven first round finishes including the quickest win in boxing history a one second victory via disqualification back in August of last year when his opponent Curtis Harper left the ring as soon as the bell rang in protest over a pay dispute earning himself a place in boxing infamy so Ajagba has eight knockouts and one walkout victory Al you know what they say boxing is the theater of the unexpected <laughs> I'll say Sartre could write a play about boxing <laughs> let's take a look at the tail of the tape and numbers that are more you know definitive uh, now the reach of Ajagba is important Ronnie Shields, his trainer, points out that that reach becomes not only an offense, but also an effective defense for him. And Wallace, who is a tall man with big reach himself, has said he actually has to change his style tonight because of the reach disadvantage. And the rules for our fights tonight, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round if an accidental foul or headbutt causes a fight to end within four rounds. It's a no decision. After four rounds, they go to the scorecards for a technical decision. Here's Hall of Fame ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and we welcome you to the Chelsea here at the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas as Premier Boxing Champions presents a big night of action coming your way and it's all brought to you by TGB Promotions and Mayweather Promotions in association with About Billions Promotions and Showtime. Sponsored by Brooklyn Boxing, this special attraction in the ring is presented in conjunction with Ring Star Sports and EC B boxing introducing to you our three judges scoring from ringside all from Las Vegas Nevada we have Adelaide Bird Lisa Jampa and Ricardo Ocasio introducing our third man to the ring he'll be giving instructions after the introductions Tony Weeks all right fans here we go 10 rounds of boxing scheduled in a heavyweight special attraction Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim, hailing from Braunschweiger, Niedersachsen, Germany. He weighed in at 242 and one half pounds. His fine record stands at 19 wins, only one loss with 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his U.S. debut, please welcome Michael Valle. His opponent across the ring on my right, finding out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing black trunks with red trim, fighting out of Stafford, Texas, by way of Ugeli, Nigeria. He weighed in at 241 pounds. A 2016 Olympian is undefeated in his campaign in the professional ranks with a record of nine wins, no losses, eight big wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his Showtime debut, here is one of the young stars of the heavyweight division. Please welcome the heavy-handed, undefeated knockout artist known as the one and only F.A. Ajagba. Once again, a referee in charge. Now to give instructions, Tony Weeks. Okay, here we go. Gentlemen, you both receive your instructions in your dressing room. Okay, right here is good. Right here is good. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourself at all times. Let's go. 
Tony Weeks, the third man inside the squared circle as we begin tonight's proceedings here in the comfy confines of the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas with a man who's appearing in Las Vegas for the first time, the undefeated F.A. Ajagba, and his opponent making his American debut, the once-beaten Michael Volish. The bell and round one, Ajagba in the black with red, Volish in the black with gold and again a Jogba turned 25 on Monday he's been blowing away his somewhat limited opposition the way he blew up those 25 candles on Monday out. <laughs> Yeah, 25, at 20, at 25, he's well positioned as a young heavyweight and so far has had great success showing off his power. And Pauly, of course, he's faced limited opposition and yet so far has passed the eye exam. So far, you know, he's looked like he's had great power. He's had the intimidation factor as well as we as you as we discussed earlier in the in the broadcast with the guy that left the ring as soon as the bell rang. <laughs> and, uh, of course, tonight it's, it would seem to be his uh, step up here against Wallace, who's only, you know, who's got to come in with a good record and seemingly off that record will come with a winning attitude. And Wallace looking to bring the fight to Ajagba early in round one. Ajagba in his last fight last month annihilated the first southpaw he faced, winning by second round knockout against his most experienced opponent, yet Amir Mansoor. You know, Volish normally is very much a boxer, but look at him throw the left hook in the uppercut. He said, I have to stand in and fight Ajagba and try and get inside that jab and see if I can hurt him. And Ajagba, very calm, cool, and collected thus far under the fire of Volish. One, one thing Volish has to also do is stop moving his head a little bit. Yeah, that, he's got that high guard, but punches can get through, and you can see his forehead is already reddening from the jabs. Oh, yeah, he's been cut, and those short shots have scored for Ajagba. Now Ajagba with the high peekaboo guard blocking the offense of Volish and now from mid-range Ajagba looking to throw. Well, Volish has been able to get on the inside. We've seen this. The question is can he be effective and he's landed some shots. And Ajagba working on the, the fundamentals more than just a, a sharp jab as he was cuffed almost behind the head there by Volish. Left uppercut on the inside by Ajagba. But Ajagba does have a decent right hand. Ronnie Shields very impressed with his work ethic and his, his sense of urgency in the gym. He knows he wants to learn everything as fast as he can, Al. Yeah, compared him to Evander Holyfield, who Ronnie Shields worked with. And right now here in round one, Ajagba's showing great poise because he weathered Volish's um, Store, you know, attack early, and he's being very, very methodical in the way he's breaking him down. And has thrown already 81 punches in this round to Jogba. Left hook behind the guard and a right, and a Jogba now in the corner. I'll tell you what Wallace wants to do. He's trying to make a Jogba punch himself out. He knows the Jogba is you get, used to getting these quick knockouts, and he's trying to mentally pressure him by not throwing high, but not throwing too much, but just being in his face and making him panic. And so far, Jogba's throwing a lot of punches, which maybe is what Wallace wants if Wallace can survive this. So, F.A. Ajagba, Michael Volish have competed for three minutes. Ah! And Volish making it to round two, something that, uh, well, not many of Ajagba's opponents can do. Let's take a look at the keys to victory for these two fighters. First of all, for Ajagba, uh, moving your head, we talked about Volish moving his head. We talked about Volish moving his head, but in uh, in this case, he needs to do it as well. The jab is important, and he did try and establish it. And the right hand, he did land several good right hands in that first round. As for Volish, keep the left hand up. He's done that. He normally keeps it very low. He's kept it up, but still has taken some of those big rights. Must stay off the ropes. He's done that by pushing forward, and he has gotten a few right hands in. He's going to need to learn a lot more. face of Wallace reddening even underneath his left eye. Yeah, there is a, a cut already around the left eye of the German Michael Wallace. Round number two as Ajagba sticks a stiff right hand behind the guard, the left uppercut on the inside, and now beginning to put together his one-two combinations with a little more pop. When was the last time you saw a heavyweight throw 93 punches? That's what the Jacques did in round, one, round number one. That's a lot of punches for a heavyweight. Ronnie Shields says in the gym he throws combinations like a 112-pounder. Yeah, you know what? And he keeps them simple. And then that's also part of the reason why he can throw so many punches. He throws simple combinations, short jabs and one-twos. And Volash, 
Valish comes back with a couple of punches behind the high guard of Ajagba. It speaks to what Pauly said. Valish is trying to oh. weather these little mini storms and mini crises and then try and get his shots in. But oh, he's been hurt here in round two yes. for sure. But don't get me wrong, but if Valish can survive this, this is what he wants. He wants a big head. Oh. He takes a knee. Time, time, time. can't catch a break. <laughs> Count the knockdown. Count the knockdown. Count the knockdown. Yeah, count the knockdown. Shades of him. Absolutely. Watch it all day. Controversy appears to be Michael Volish's shadow. Yeah, no, no, you got No, no. You good? Yeah. And dissimilar, very similar to what happened with Hammer in the fifth okay. round where he was looking for a disqualification. Okay. Okay. Sat down go. to the bottom rope, was instead time coming in. up Let's for go. the second time. And yet here we continue, so the referee didn't even warn the jumper. Oh, coming up the throwing ball, but man, he gets caught with that right hand behind the guard, and now a Jogba. Good action-packed fight, however, for the heavyweights, and now you mentioned the Continues to tattoo again. Volish left uppercut, straight jab through the guard of Volish, and now Volish not returning fire. Referee Weeks watching closely. He's stopping the fight, and here in the second round, the jackpot improves to 10 0 with his ninth knockout win. And maybe somewhere in the decision that Tony Weeks made was the fact that he sensed when Lawish was down and trying to kind of lobby him for a, a DQ that he didn't sense Lawish was that keen on competing. Even though he came out, Lawish, after the knockdown and did throw the, big com the combinations, he looked very passive. We'll go back and take a look at uh, what happened leading up to the the knockdown. There's the right hand, and no question, you, you can make a strong case, a point at least could have been deducted. There's no question that he hit late. And at this point, we'll look at the end of the fight after he had gotten up, and here is Ajagba being very aggressive. By the way, the uppercut of Ajagba is a terrific weapon, and we saw that a moment ago, both with both the right and the left hand. Valich not doing anything, just kind of in a shell. And I think Tony Weeks decided that he could get injured or hurt and uh, stepped in. And then we'll take a look again at it. And everything starts off the jab for Jagba. We mentioned that as one of the keys, and it is, in fact, that for him. Obviously, Michael Valich not up to the, to the task of being an action fighter here tonight, which isn't even his normal style. He likes to box, but he had to try and engage Jagba, and this was what he got for his trouble as Jagba reels off the combinations. One of the things that we could see in this, in this um, video that differentiates him, and he's pretty proud of this victory, isn't he? Yes. The new Nigerian nightmare. Exactly. What differentiates him more from a lot of other heavyweights is that combination punching. And the numbers will reflect that to a degree. Look at the number of punches already thrown by Jagba in a round and a half. That's a lot of punches and accurate, landing 43% of his power punches, according to show stats. The power punch, of course, is everything other than a jab, and uh, very impressive. Let's make it official with Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of one minute, 40 seconds in round number two. Our referee in charge, Tony Weeks, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout and still undefeated, the one and only F.A. Ajakaba. So, following in the footsteps of Henry Winkler, WWE superstar Ricochet, a new one and only, and F.A. Ajakba proving to be uh, destructive with his uh, 
punching power Al as he stops Michael Volish, vanquishes the German in round number two. Yeah, you know, Ronnie Shields said he's about a year away from facing a top contender. Volish, though he was undefeated before his last fight against Hammer, had faced limited opposition. That was why he was undefeated. Definitely not a top heavyweight, but a very impressive performance by Jabba.